Maya Holt.
welcome to the regular meeting of the Council of the City of Long Beach held Tuesday, September 17th, 2019 at 7 p.m. We'll have a roll call. Council Member Diamond? Yes. Here. Council Member Rama? Here. Vice President Bendo? Present. President Moore? Here. Let the record indicate the presence of Acting City Manager Raymond Slammer and Assistant Corporation Council Greg Greg Thomas. We will now have the clue to the floor. Heritage and culture. 
Hispanic Heritage Month, whose roots go back to 1968, was originally celebrated for a week and was not until President Ronald Reagan expanded the week to a month in 1988. The celebration begins each year on September 15th, which is the anniversary of the independence of five Latin American countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. This year's Hispanic Heritage Month theme is Hispanic Americans, a history of serving our nation. Long Beach is proud to reflect uh, on Hispanic American service and contributions to the history of our nation and celebrate within our community. On behalf of the City Council, we express our sincere sympathy to our Commissioner of Buildings, Scott Kevins, who lost his father last week. Our prayers are with him and his family. Since our last meeting, I want to provide an update on the Open Government Socrata Open Finance platform as referenced during the City Council meeting on September 3rd. Uh, I had the opportunity to actually view the Socrata Open Finance Showcase site along with Dave Fraser, Jamie Roman, as well as our comptroller, Ina Resnick, last Friday. The entire council received the update and the link to browse the demonstration site and provide feedback. This platform generates reports that really helps us to establish goals for our departments, programs, as well as initiatives, and then tracks them while simultaneously keeping the residents updated on spending, performance, and progress. We also want to express our thanks to those who coordinated the 9-11 memorial held last week. Uh, once again, Councilman Aramo, Mandel, as well as myself, attended the evening memorial, and again, we state that we will never forget um, as a city. The announcement for the open work session scheduled for Tuesday, September 24th has been posted on the city's website. The session will be held in this room at 6.30 p.m. All are welcome to attend. Once again, we remind you that there is no public comment, but you are welcome to be a part of our first work session. Lastly, the council is in receipt of the acting city manager, Rob Agostini's resignation letter via email. The council is aggressively seeking a temporary replacement. We want to emphasize that the city will continue to remain operational to provide uninterrupted quality service to our residents. It has come to my attention, however, via social media and news media that there are several concerns regarding the most, most recent announcement of Ron Agassiz's departure and my connection to it. I will do my best in the next few minutes to provide clarity to those who are willing to listen. On Monday evening, I did send a Facebook post with four residents on Facebook, my Facebook followers are the most recent events that occurred as it relates to our city. I have openly shared information on my Facebook page for the past four years. My only intent was to provide information in a timely manner. The post did not state any decisions or actions that would be made by Lisa Moore. There are still five members of the council. It's important also to clarify the series of allegations regarding my whereabouts on Monday afternoon. As most of you here are most most of you here are well aware. I serve as a full-time communications professor at Nassau Community College, but I also serve as the chair of the Academic Senate. This position allows me to serve as a liaison between the college president, the board of trustees, the staff, and the faculty. As last week was only our second week of the semester, I did attend several emergency meetings. What is important for you to know is that I left Nassau Community College after 2.30 p.m. I was not in this building. I was not at City Hall. Um, I was actually picking up my mother at the Hempstead Long, Long Island Railroad Station for the 3 o'clock meeting. At 3.03, I sent a text to the council majority to state that I was headed to City Hall. Why? Because I had sent an email at 8.53 8.53 a.m. requesting that a special city council meeting be held on Tuesday, September 10th, 2019 at 7.30 a.m. I was contacted by the city administration that this request was impossible due to construction. My only purpose for coming to City Hall was to verify this, and I did notify the council majority of my intention. When I arrived at City Hall at approximately 3.36, I stopped by the fifth floor, which is customary, and an envelope was left in my mailbox, which contained the separation pay agreement of the acting city manager, Raw and CC. I shared that information immediately with the entire council via email at approximately 3.36. I left the fifth floor and went to the sixth floor with Commissioner Miranda to review the OEM area and the area designated for the council meeting. We were right in this room and I took pictures. I took the photos and I left City Hall. I sent those photos to Councilman Benzo and Mandel at 4.16 p.m. 
I did not call a meeting. I did not conduct a secret group meeting or whatever other allegations I have been accused of in the past several days. The staff here, they leave at 4 o'clock due to the summer hours, which did not change in terms of the hours for effect. Now, once I saw the separation pay agreement, it was obvious to me at least that a resignation was forthcoming. I didn't have to have a conversation about it. The agreement had been requested in the past. Moreover, during the last meeting on September 3rd, the council majority moved to request the documents and we were unsuccessful. Second, according to news and social media reports, I was also accused of scrapping outside council and being complicit in corrupt actions of those involved in payout. Due to the conflict that have occurred uh, and the most recent audit report by our controller, I agree that outside counsel is necessary for the present city council. At this time, however, based on the strategy that the outline procedures proposed, I do not feel that it was necessary to move forward with this firm during the proposed special meeting. This does not mean that I'm against outside counsel because we all recognize that we need it. It was just that for this particular firm, I was not in agreement at that time. I believe that more time is needed to secure a firm that specializes in municipal law and it's important and it's best for our taxpayers and for us as a council to move expeditiously to see the pressing matters resolved. In terms of outside counsel, you also need to know that I did send an email to the entire council um, asking if they had any interest in meeting with attorney Capozolo and only one member so far has responded. In terms of a secret meeting on Wednesday 9-11, I was also accused of having a meeting with Councilman Aramo and uh, Councilwoman Diamond without uh, my fellow council persons, Mandel and Benzo. This is also untrue. I contacted the entire city council via email on Monday, September 9th. In addition, texts were also sent due to the lateness of the hour. It's important for you to know that I did not receive any responses or all the responses from the four council members until Tuesday evening, 9-10, at approximately 10, 10 p.m. The responses communicate that no one was available to engage in a conference call or meeting until Wednesday evening. Thus, the conference call was scheduled for Wednesday night at 8 p.m. The conference call was initiated with the purpose of including Councilman Bendo because I was aware of the fact that he was on vacation last week. It's important for you to understand that I was not going to state my position on Facebook. Due to the volume of comments, whether they be negative or positive, it was impossible. First, I've never had my actions questioned in that manner before. In times past, I've always been questioned for the rationale for my vote, but my character has never been attacked in four years. As city council president, my vote holds the same weight as my fellow council members. I have not been asked to make any decisions without the council. I have not made any decisions without the council. Since Monday, September 9th, I have emailed in an attempt to address these issues, email that has gone unanswered or without an official response, Answers are being placed in Newsday and the Herald. The reality is the charter and the code as it stands gives all authority to the city manager. That charter and code was in effect way before Anissa Moore ever came to live in Long Beach. I see firsthand the need to make changes as it relates to the charter, but without three council members, we will remain in a dark place during a time when our city needs it the most. Corruption is real, corruption has hurt us, and will continue to hurt us. If we move, again, if we move forward, this is not gonna be about Anissa Moore taking any credit. This is about the residents, people who are right here in this audience fighting for years, and good people in government working together to make a positive change that benefits us all. Lastly, the, council, the city council, according to the charter, can officially take action through a motion, an ordinance, or by resolution. But this is the place that it has to be done, not via social media. We must be able to move the city forward with legislation and policy. The council meeting is a place to discuss and to debate the issues. The council should bring the voice of the residents that they represent and serve with them to this very forum. If the council does not have a voice in City Hall, then this is not a democracy, this is anarchy. I am also here tonight because I believe that when we meet in this room twice a month in City Hall, we are representing the benefits of being a part of a democracy. As, as a member of a five-person structure, our responsibility is to speak and to represent those who are right here in this room, but we also have to speak for those who are not in this room, over 30,000 people that remain. And so this concludes my report, and now on to the voting. Um, for the calendar, 
item number one, resolution authorizing the acting city manager to enter into a contract for on-call sewer maintenance services with the lowest responsible bidder. Okay, this time we're going to acknowledge uh, our commissioners on the random to come forward. Good evening, members of the council. Good evening, members of the council. Good evening. It's been a long day. Uh, this is a contract or a requirements contract to uh, have a company come in and TV several of the problems areas where we have sewer lines and determine whether those sewer lines are good candidates for in-place curing. In other words, without open cut uh, replacement. So part of this contract will be uh, looking at some problem areas with the you know television cameras running through the sewer pipes and determining whether the problems can be fixed with a, a, a in-place curing method that we looked at trying last year. This would save a significant amount of money. Uh, we could have done it on this section of overlay and LK. It would have cost about $40,000 instead of $200,000. So we're hoping to be able to find a couple of candidates this year with this uh, TV and include in the contract is actual cost for lining. Uh, and we would hopefully line a couple of sections at a great savings and uh, be able to uh, uh, to solve some of the problems on those sewer lines. Okay, at this time, uh, are there any questions from members of the council? Good evening, Commissioner. Good evening. Um, when they do the test uh, to see if it's a good candidate, um, if it's not a good candidate, does it potentially cause damage that now has to be replaced immediately? No. Uh, what they'll do first is they'll use a jet rod to clean the line out, and then they'll run a cable through the line, put a camera up to it, pull the camera through the cable, and they'll record every foot of it. But they'll be looking for things that are like displaced joints. Um, and even if there's some displaced joints, there's a method within the contract to repair those joints without digging them up. Uh, and then what they'll look at is crown corrosion, see if there's any crown corrosion on the pipe. And once they have a, a feel for the pipe, they can then design a in-place lineup for that sewer section. Okay. So if it, if it doesn't prove to be a good candidate, then if it doesn't prove a good candidate, we'll have to note that the line will be cleaned out, and we may have to address it later on with a full, right. you know, open cut replacement, but not immediately. Okay. But not immediately. Thank you. Have you identified any areas that will be prioritized? We we have a list from the uh, sewer maintenance superintendent. I don't have it with me, uh, so I don't want to give any any wrong locations. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, we have a list of about seven or eight candidates that we're going to look at first. These have been problems where we've had non-stop stoppages. Just recognizing pipes, <coughs> pipe size matters. About how many linear feet can we do for 100,000 If we do two sections, probably uh, based on the, the cost we got, we probably could do two sections that are 150 to 200 feet each. Okay, so really on the maybe a couple. Yeah, just we, we we did a small contract this time. We had put 100,000 in the budget just to see how this process works. If it's, I mean, this is a process that's been around for about 40 years, but uh, we hadn't tried it in Long Beach. Uh, and we think it's a good, you know, a, a good test to try something. If it's successful, we'll probably try to bid a larger contract next year. Will, will there be any issues? I know we have the process in some areas with undersized lines. And, and obviously the, the ID will, will right. up, unless, well, I know there's the other type which will expand and burst the old pipe. I'm assuming this is just a line. It's um, just a line, but now we get you excited about manning formulas because the smoothness will be better. Yeah. Sorry for the engineer there, folks. But so there should be a problem with the ID. No, no. And if, if the main is undersized, that would be a can would not be a candidate okay. for line. It would be, uh, it would be a replacement with a larger main. Any other questions from the members of the council? Okay, seeing none, we'll open this up to the public. Questions? Anyone, any questions? Yes, Representative Gillespie. Talking about water pollution, which is, is other one 
about eight hundred thousand for uh, salaries and stuff. How come we can't do this ourselves? I mean, this has been around for forty years, is it? This uh, technology. Okay, this point to come up and answer the rest of the questions. The whole process is they design a uh, liner that has a two-part fiberglass uh, components in it. The liner comes in frozen in a truck, so you need a freezer truck. Uh, and what happens is you, with water pressure, you unfold to a manhole, you unfold the pipe or the, the liner through the manhole with water pressure, so it unfolds with inside the existing pipe. When that happens, you then take a boiler and you boil the water, you heat the water up. When the water is boiled, the, um, the, the two fiberglass components come together and harden. They then have a special machine that goes inside the pipe and wherever there's a sewer ladder that hooks up to the sewer, there's an indent from the pressure. That also has a camera on it that goes up to that, to that lateral, spots it, turns it, cuts the divot out so that the lateral is now hooked up to the sewer, so it's no lost time in terms of people not being able to use their, their uh, facilities. Uh, so it's a, it's a fairly quick process. The equipment is very expensive to do this. Uh, we, one, do not have the equipment. Uh, and number two, our people do not have the expertise. In addition, the outside sewer people, just so everybody understands, they not only take care of the sewer line maintenance, but they also take care of the, uh, the stormwater drainage and the stormwater pipes. So, they do more than just sewer maintenance. All right, you stay right there. Do you have a, another question? Right. Or are you satisfied? It's our plan to hire them every year to do this. It provides that it proves to be successful. But we have budgeted 200,000 for each year for the next four years to do this. And it was supposed to, I remember when we were talking about uh, the initial lining of the sewer, which Ms. Miranda said would help us, we wouldn't have to replace the lines, we could line them. Uh, when we first went in, we got about 10 feet and the pipe collapsed, and then we said we went the other direction, we got about 10 feet and the pipe collapsed that way too. How much cheaper is this really going to be than replacing? which we might eventually have to do anyway. It, it is tremendously cheaper. I mean, it would have been $40,000. The process did not cause the collapse on that. The collapse existed. That mean was being bypassed already. Uh, we were trying to see if it was just a breeze in the way and trying to get a breeze out of the way. So it would have been $40,000 to replace that line versus you know, a little over $200,000. Okay. I'm going to take another question, but I think it's fair to say that um, this is something that we need to continue to look at and work at um, as a city. And I think, uh, obviously, some of the suggestions that you've made, Mr. Lester, we can take that uh, into consideration in terms of future outcasting or future outcasting. Yeah, I, I'm just concerned going outside. You know, we, we're trying to take care of our own maintenance and stuff like that. We're talking about a lot of money, $4.2 million. We're talking, and I'm not, I'm just talking, you, you, you remember in sewer there's water pollution and there's sewer. And just the sewer, and we have, I think, I understand 33 miles of sewer pipes, is that right? 55. 55 miles of sewer pipes. And if it's costing us about 100,000 for 100 feet, we're not going anywhere. Yeah, but you have to remember that Nassau County is going to be taking over our sewer system can you just check, check so, your microphone? I'm not sure that you can yeah, sure. That's what, okay, yeah. There you go. I'm sorry, it was turned off. Somebody's trying to tell me something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Nassau County is going to be taking over our sewer system in a few years. So right. Right, so right now, this is basically keeping our system up and running until Nassau County takes ownership of it. So that's the purpose. My understanding was Nassau County was not going to replace our pipes. You're telling me they are? I'm not telling you. Nassau County will take ownership of the system. So it they, will be then up to them to decide if they're going to replace the pipes. So they will take maintenance. Correct. Okay. Because my understanding was staying or not. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, they, they are. They are. They are. Okay. They and are. how many years are we talking about? My, my announcement is by 2022. 
Okay, if you could just say that in the microphone so the people in the back can hear you. Right now, the plan is by 2022, the county will be taking over the entire sewer system, including the collection sewer system. You know, one, one other thing I failed to mention, one of the biggest problems we have because of the high groundwater here and a lot of cement piping is crown corrosion. And because we have high groundwater, we get a lot of leaching of groundwater into the sewer pipes, which then adds to the cost of treatment. So over the, the, the past several years since We've replaced about 10 miles of sewer pipe where we do these complete road projects and where we replace sewer mains. We also cut out the infiltration from groundwater. As a result, the typical amount of treatment we've been doing at the plant has been reduced from about 5 million gallons a day down to 4.2 million gallons a day. Each one of these lines that we do like this will eliminate more additional, uh, of, uh, additional inflow, which will also save the treatment. And the county's going to have the same interest in doing that also. So we do two major projects where we replace water main and sewer mains every year. And, uh, if, and the county has spoke with us, they will, we will work with them to coordinate our capital projects so that when we're doing a water main and a complete road project, just like we do with National Grid to replace the gas mains, they will come in and replace the sewer mains. And they will have an incentive to also do things like lining and replacement of pipes so that they can reduce the amount of treatment they need to do to pay for off. Okay. Last question, Mr. Lester. There's some other people who have hands up. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so I just want to make sure I have it straight. So we have right now, we have about $3.1 million set aside in the capital funding for sewer improvements. And that includes, you know, in, in the year 2024, 2023, 2022. So that money will not be necessary based on Nassau County. That's correct, and some of that money is for hazard mitigation, which is FEMA money, and some of that money will be, uh, we're working with FEMA right now to switch that money from being used for hardening to also to harden the new pump station so that it will reduce the amount of cost to the city in terms of the turnover to, to uh, Nassau County. Thank you, great questions tonight. All right, thank you. So I have questions for the public? Okay, I guess that question was answered. Okay, Mr. Delore. Good evening, Council. Mike Delore, one quick question. How has our nitrogen levels changed since uh, Brady Risk Management has entered? I know there was a goal to get them reduced, and I don't know if this is the time to ask that question if it can be answered. Thank you. Actually, with, with the changes that we just recently made in the, at the treatment plant, the improvements for the uh, primary uh, settling tanks and the uh, sand filters, uh, and the, uh, we have reduced our nitrogen uh, discharges to allow the limits by the DEC. Uh, we will not meet, one of the reasons for the county taking over, over the, the flow is in the future we will probably not meet new ammonia standards for nitrates out of the thing, but we have significantly reduced the nitrates with the improvements that were made at the treatment plant. Uh, the, uh, the, how we collect the wastewater is not really, it does not really have a impact. On, on the okay. All right. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Dina Fiore. I just have one question. Okay. Now, I heard somebody to look at sewer laterals, right? Or did you work on sewer laterals? No, this has nothing to do with sewer laterals. Okay, so this has nothing to do with sewer laterals to those who are the back. Service angle one. So we have three. Please speak in the microphone so people who are watching. The residents have three risks. They're paying for it. We're, we don't have any conflict of these people who work on city line where the great great risk we might affect them from a homeowner standpoint. We're not going to see any any greater risk being known to where the work is done at the residents. They have any problems. No, we will not. And in addition, uh, even after the county takes over the plant, Brady Risk will continue to provide home services for, for the sewer aisles. <coughs> Great question. All right, seeing no other hands, we're going to move on to item number two. Item number two, 
resolution authorizing the act of city manager to enter into an agreement with an annual marine construction contract. All right, so uh, you might as well take a seat up here. Commissioner sure. Miranda. That's my last This is our annual marine contract we've been holding in advance to award it so that it could go out close to the, uh, the uh, North Shore Bulkhead project. This contract will cover several areas. One, it will replace and repair some Typeflex valves and add some new Typeflex valves. It will repair and replace uh, deteriorated bulkhead on public land. Uh, and in addition, with the North Shore Bulkhead, there are many docks and uh, purposes on the bulkhead that they're going to be replacing on our property where private citizens have built. Uh, those people will be asked to move their, their docks and when they do, do, if they do not do that, we have to have a means of removing it for the contract because we not, cannot spend the ghost of money on that portion of the project. Uh, so what will happen is in this contract we will remove anybody's docks or materials that need to be moved for them to put the new bulkhead in and reinstall them at the homeowner's cost, and the homeowners will be billed by our contractor. They can also uh, voluntarily use our contractor to or the, or the bulkhead contractor to remove their docks and what have you. Uh, we will look at areas that weren't included in the North Shore bulkhead project, and with this contract, which will cover two years and have some renewable years, uh, we will uh, use more, you know, more capital money later on to continue replacing you know, public bulkhead. That's needed. Okay, so how will this be communicated to the residents? The, we've already held a meeting uh, on the North Shore Bulkhead with all the residents that live along that, and now that the contract has been bid, we've received bids and actually got very good bid results. The contract came in about a million and a half dollars under the NBS estimate, and uh, we will be coming, we are waiting for GOES to final approval to award. Uh, probably at the first meeting in October, we'll be asking to award that contract, which is about $9.9 .9 million. Once the contractor figures out his schedule, we will have another meeting with the residents along with the contractor to, to go over his timeline schedule and what items are going to have to be removed. Okay, thank you. Questions from the members of the council? Does, does the contract include the labor and materials? The whole materials, I guess, as well? Yes. Okay. So again, I'm assuming it's not unlimited work. I mean, no, it's, it's, a, it's a requirements contract, so we put what, you know, just items in there based on quantities that we think that might be over the next couple of years. So we're only, if the contract, the total bid for the contract, so we have a way of comparing it to other bidders, was about $2.9 million, but we're actually only awarding it for this year for a million and a half dollars worth of work. And if there's not that, that kind of work out there, we'll put it towards more replacing bulkhead. Uh, re regarding the, the, the tide flex valves, because we don't have a preventative maintenance program for them, you know, we've had issues where they get clogged up and don't work. So uh, putting new ones in, if, again, without a maintenance program, we're going to wind up with tide flex valves that are just stuck open. Are we looking to do something to address yes. that? Yes, we are. That would be part of our sewer maintenance group's uh, responsibility. Uh, Rich Shu from the building department uh, gave me an opportunity to go out on this boat with him and inspect all the existing Typeflex valves. And what we found is the existing ones that are duct bill valves that are internal work the best. Uh, they tend to, to close when they need to close. And we have these other valves, especially on the larger outfalls, you'll see they almost look like a hand sticking out into the water and they fold up like a glove. They're getting held open all the time. They, they get very stiff. Uh, so we're going to be looking to replace those with internal valves. Uh, and uh, again, once, you know, well, we have a large, you know, fairly large group of sewer maintenance, uh, it's really a lot for them doing both the sewer maintenance and the stormwater maintenance. So, uh, you know, uh, once we're not responsible for maintaining the sewer system, we'll be able to do a lot more there. Um, and I guess, I'm not sure if this is for system for council or who, who approves the two one-year extensions? Generally what happens is they'll come back to 
public works and ask if they want to extend the contract at the same rates. Right. The contract. No, no, I mean, who in the city approves the extension? Well, we would do a resolution and ask the council to approve the extension. That, that's what I was asking. Yeah, that's what we've done in the past. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from members of the council? Seeing none, we'll open up the floor for our resident. Yes, Mr. Dean. Only the, the, public, the, the only the public bulkhead, yeah, correct. The east side, so right. 
Yeah, and we'll replace it in an orderly fashion. So as we replace it, we'll be putting it up the base plate elevation. It doesn't make sense to replace a portion of it. Yeah. But it, from
I want to thank Commissioner Miranda for answering some of them for me earlier today. Uh, it's my understanding that a lot of the work that's done under this contract is particular uh, to body shop type work after a car is either in an accident or something happened to the vehicle. Much of it is covered by insurance, which would alleviate some of the concerns that you have as to whether it's needed, because generally you've got a quote that your insurance adjuster will come and review whatever it is that, that has happened to the vehicle. So that was my understanding that a majority of the work that's done under the contract is for that purpose, particularly the auto body, the painting part. Yeah, this is work that we cannot do now. How so? We have a garage that deals with all that. We don't have the auto body, you know, paint, we don't have the auto body. But isn't that frivolous waste of money if we have a, an auto garage and if we have insurance that covers it? Why should we give the city manager this authority? Well, much of the work that's done at the garage, as I'm told, and it's my understanding is the repair of the vehicle. I think that body shop type of work is a different type of expertise and training than an oil change and tires and transmission and, and mechanics and whatever. I, I don't fix cars for a living, but I think that it's a different type of expertise to um, to paint and repair the body of a vehicle. And it, it's my understanding that that's not something that's either cost effective to do in-house or that we have the ability to do, at least that was my understanding. Okay, so we're gonna hear from Commissioner Miranda to just focus back to your questions that were raised. This contract is just for body work from accidents and insurance work. We don't do this in the garage because there are many, many environmental regulations to do this. You need paint boots. You need uh, special equipment to make sure that you're not releasing VOCs into the air. So to set up for the few accidents that we might have during the course of the year that require a body shop to do the work, doesn't the cost doesn't make sense. It's much more economical to send them out to a body shop. Good. Thank you. Thank you for your questions tonight. Are there any other questions from the public? I, I wasn't finished. Um, I, yes, consider yes. Um, again, the language is too broad. It says as needed and as necessary. This is completely unnecessary for our city who has a, a credit rating of two two notches above junk, and we just bonded a you know a few million, million dollars uh, in the last meeting. This is extremely unnecessary. We have a, a body shop uh, already, and you know cosmetics. I don't think anyone here can put cosmetics on what's going on in the city's finances. This is very broad language. It's unnecessary. We should be saving money, and it's very broad language, especially for a city manager giving authority to the city manager that is not in in power. He is officially now, but he's not here tonight, and he is leaving officially on October 1st. Giving him this power at this moment is extremely uncalled for and unnecessary, and it hurts all the taxpayers in the city. Thank you. Thank you. So noted. Um, who's next? Dean Fiore. So 
I think, to her point, I think the language needs to be clear. I think we should also have an idea of what our police looks like before we open up the and say, let's start with the parents and painting everybody's calls for what's new. And maybe some of the people maybe should not be called. Or should be proportionately um, maybe part of it. I've had company cards in the past. In my old my old experience, you've always paid, you have a company card that you may have to pay a percentage. 80% is job usage, 20% is personal usage. So before we put a stamp on something, maybe you should ask those questions. Okay, well, thank you. Let's see if we can get some answers. Uh, in terms of Sean's rating, he's very good. Question, what do you think of the the legality, in terms of are we in the city required to repair cars for someone who is, I guess, off hour? Can you just speak to that issue? I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have that answer for you right now. If it's a city owned vehicle, you know, and, and, and there's damage to the city vehicle, typically the garage fixes it. I mean, that's about it. <laughs>
And just because we individually under the Constitution, um, where the Constitution says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, that does not mean that the city council cannot conduct its business free from religion and so that you can keep the work that you're supposed to be doing here. Our water is still brown. Um, and I understand that you know if Homie wants to take off, then that she's absolutely allowed to, just like I'm allowed to take off anywhere if, I, if I'm working in the United States because of our great constitution. But that does not mean that the city council shouldn't be doing the work that it's supposed to be doing, especially since there is a, going to be the first, um, the first couple of meetings that the city manager will be officially off the job. So it's imperative that the residents are aware of what's going on with Let me just stop with for a moment. I just want to yes. clarify. We're not skipping a meeting. What's going to happen is instead of meeting that Tuesday, we're going to meet the next day. And that's all. It's not, um, we're not going to in any way miss a meeting. It's just making sure that the next day we come in. So no time is being lost. But also, it's important for us in terms of having a meeting. We have a meeting on a religious holiday. We want to make sure that the public has access to the meeting as well. We want to be respectful for everyone. It's not just one person. Um, and we've done this on a yearly basis. I can only speak from the time that I've been here since 2016. Um, we do this every year just to make sure that we have, we maximize the amount of people who are in the audience. So we thank you for your statement and we thank you um, for being open and having an open mind with respect to the celebration of holidays. Thank you. It, it just didn't say so in the agenda that I, it was the next day. It said yeah, it was it, postponed. Yeah, it, it says it the next time. But it's also not, it's not just for our uh, council members that are of the Jewish faith, there are more than one, uh, but it's for the residents as well, so that residents can come, um, you know, free from their celebrating their holiday on the next day. So it's, it's okay. not just about council. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. And if I could just, just reiterate for clarification purposes, as Councilwoman Moore, President Moore, uh, said, this has actually been a practice in the city long before I was on the city council. How Jewish holidays in particular tend to fall on different days of the week, depending on the year. And it has been the practice to move them one day over. This was noticed on the calendar as well in the beginning of the year. And there was a discussion as to, and in particular, this item is not, it's not only to accommodate our residents who observe the Jewish holidays, but it is also to accommodate Election Day. Um, so I, I just want to thank you, members of the council for clarifying that it wasn't just directed for me. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments with respect to item number five? Seeing now we're going to move to item number six. Item number six, resolution authorizing publication for hearing of an ordinance to amend the code of ordinances of the city of Long Beach regarding water and water distribution. Publication only. Hearing will be held Wednesday, October 2nd at 7 p.m. We will now move on to the public. We will introduce and move the adoption of item number one, resolution authorizing the acting city manager to enter into a contract for on call sewer rate and services with the lowest responsible bidder. I will. Who will second? I will. Council Member Dunn? Yes. Council Member Rama? Yes. Vice President Benda? Yes. President Moore? Yes. Who will move it? Who will move, sorry about that. Who will introduce and move the adoption of item number two, re, number two, resolution authorizing the acting city manager to enter into an agreement with an annual marine construction contract. Who will second? Council Member Dunn? Yes. Council Member Rama? Yes. Vice President Benda? Yes. President Moore? Yes. We will introduce and move the adoption of item number three, resolution authorizing the acting city manager to enter into agreements for auto body repair services for city of Long Beach vehicles on an as needed basis. I'd like to make a motion to table this until we get to the next question. Second. Second.
Motion passed. Thank you. That's the, that's what's missing is the 
financial information. That's not what it sounded like from what some of the questions I was hearing from the public. Okay. Well, that, that's, that was if that's your question, that's easy enough to find out. And, you know, I don't have those answers tonight because this is not one of the contracts that I that I handle. This is handled strictly through the purchasing department on an you know on an annual or on a biannual basis. So I'm sure they have those numbers compared, so we can get those for you. Right. So I mean, we went through the procurement process to find these three vendors. We have their pricing as far as how much they're charging, and you know, really going back and comparing prices is going to lend anything new to this contract here. We went through the procurement process. This is the best deal we were able to secure for the city. And like I said, my concern is just you're going to have city vehicles sitting there, and we're not going to be able to service them. If, if, if somebody came to me in my office and asked me to approve a contract without giving me any pricing, I'd fire them. <laughs> Let's just pull it out. Can we just pull it? Let's just pull it, let it fail, and move on. Permitted the closure of the road primarily due to the 
safety concern. The road had to be closed for many reasons. Uh, one reason, there are approximately 12 water mains going into the former hospital building that needed to be shut off, and the water shutoffs were located in the roadway. Additionally, there was no reason for the traffic to utilize that portion of the East Bay Drive, as there are no residents or offices being utilized uh, adjacent to that portion of the street since the closure of the hospital. Uh, I'm just sharing again the information that was given to me. I will also share it with the members of the East Home Civic, as well as the uh, North Bay Canal Civic, and also those members who are on State Street who are not present in the meeting tonight. And I just wanted to give you the information that I was given. And at this time, forward, this way, other side, okay. All right, we'll hear from Barbara Mosca.
to actually prepare the report. We apologize that we do not have a response for you this evening. However, we will have a response for you during the next meeting because you've taken so much time and care to share the information with us and to actually make another trip and to come back. Um, so I will make sure that we have something prepared for you during the next meeting. You've raised some excellent issues and questions, and um, we will make sure that um, you are, are given the opportunity to hear from us questions of our response. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We'll hear now from John Craigo Dacus. Was that 12? before the end of the year. Um, we had some other pressing matters and we were not at the time, um, we did not have the opportunity to address it. Um, one of the purposes, the reasons for the work session being held next week is for us to begin to look at some of the issues um, that were not covered during the season. There were several and some of the reports and some of the other comments that have been made are some of the issues that will come up and we will make sure that we will address this issue in a timely manner for you. And we also thank you for your interest in being a part of um, the concession. Thank you. Now, at this time, we'll hear from uh, Mary Wilson. I believe mm -hmm. 
saying they were backing that resolution, okay? And then you decided by yourself that you didn't want to go further to protect the taxpayers and have them look at what was going on here. I just don't understand it. So I think and we separated two. Uh, we have to separate the two. There's one. Which no, it's all together. Okay, but that's, what, that's, what, that's what the problem is. We're putting it all together. There's one. It is all together. No, there's a resolution, right? And then there's the resolution is pulled. The practice. So what's being said now is that for whatever reason, it's because I'm the council president, when I decided to say no. Uh, they had a different weight. Okay, let's just ask the question. Mr. Benzo, did you know it was going to be pulled? Of course not. No. Okay. You can't answer. Mr. Simon, did you know it was being pulled? Just for clarification purposes, I wasn't invited to a breakfast, nor asked to participate. Nor did I speak with. You didn't know. Nor did I speak with. Hold on one second. I'm answering your question. Nor did I speak with Mr. Gross. Nor did I support the item that was passed around for calling a special meeting. Okay. All right. Mr. Ramos, same question. Okay. All right. So thank you. you did decide yourself. That's all I'm asking. Why? You didn't like being no, left out. No. And now you are exactly. doing it. And I'm still being left out now because, again, there's information that's going out there without me. So it's the same. But, again, all I'm saying to you is that there has to be know, three people. Well. There has to be three people to move it forward. So it's not me making a decision. They had two votes. They didn't have another one. That's all. But I thank you and I, I you are the third one. one. You are the third one. That was just the I was the third one. one. That's what I'm saying. So that's three. Three. Right. But then So when you, you pull me out, that leaves two. And that's not enough to move the resolution forward. All right? No. Leanne Baker? Surveyor, 
not us residents saying, you know, I think 15 miles an hour is a good thing, let's go for it. You know, I think it has to be surveyed by a professional um, to evaluate that. And the other question I have is, who do I need to foil? Because I would like to know exactly how much it costs to put those signs in along the other streets where they say 15 miles an hour? How much is it going to cost to implement a street sign? And we would need, at bare minimum, a two for Walnut. You're going to need one when we're turning off from Maple onto Walnut. You need one, I'm going to try to hurry up. And you're going to need a speed sign when we're coming off from Roosevelt. I also would like to know what's going to be the cost to have the survey implement two additional stops on Walnut. One will be at uh, Coolidge. And another one I would recommend at Belmont. That way it prevents people from escalating in speed along that street. Additionally, I want to add to that clause with a FOIL request. I want to know how much it's going to cost for us to put in raised stops, you know, at the stop signs along the white line. That way it will slow down vehicles who are escalating or riding the stop sign. They have to go over that um, bump. And additionally, what else I want to know is what I want to mention, the domino effect is you have more people riding their bicycles on the sidewalk because of unsafe road conditions. They cannot ride their bikes in the street, which they're supposed to do. And I've been looking at all the fines and penalties. I've actually have started reading all the ordinances um, within our city. So I'm learning very quickly what our penalty fines and everything are. Um, so the question I would have is, you know, we're creating, it's a domino effect, and the bicyclist on the sidewalk is creating safe, unsafe conditions for pedestrians with small children, you know, people walking their pets. And so so you know, I need to go to. I had the opportunity to um, obviously standing there for a while and within less than five minutes I witnessed eight people just going through the, the light without even stopping and uh, this is this is a serious concern and I'm sure if I ask people who are sitting out in the audience um, they're experiencing the same thing wherever they are whether they're on the east side or west side this is a major issue and enforcement has to be something that we address um, but let's go through the process for a moment um, can anyone speak to the petition, what's needed in terms of the petition, and uh, where the petition can go in terms of uh, moving this forward um, with the neighbors who are on uh, Walnut. I mean, if this is an issue of the traffic signage, you should have that conversation with the police department because they're the ones who place the traffic safety signs. Okay, sir, if I can respond here, please. I did contact, I left a voice message for Commissioner Tatum. Am I saying Sandy? Um, a young lady returned my call, I forgive me, I think her name is Jamie, and um, she said she was the um, secretary to him. And I asked her about submitting petitions for the speed sign and regarding the elevated stops, and she said I had to go to um, Public Works. So I contacted Public Works, I spoke with somebody by the name of Chris. She said she never heard of it, she was going to talk to her engineer, someone would call me back, I never heard back from anybody. So that's why I'm asking, so can I submit a portal to see what your actual policy and procedures with the city is so I can follow them appropriately, or if they're failed or flawed, we can talk about a correction. Okay. So first, um, you're going to leave us your information today so that we can follow up with you. Um, we will get back to you in terms of the voicemail and all the other information because it seems like you're going in a circular motion here. We want to make sure that you get some answers. Um, we'll do that. Also, if you can just when you make a FOIA request and when you also have some of your other concerns, if you can send that email to us or you can send it to me, I can forward it to everyone else and we'll, we can start working on the process for you. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, thank you. Ms. Kathy Williams.
all of us. Listen, can you hear the residents and generations to come pleading for a transparent and non-biased city council to bring back good government to the city of Long Beach and their children? It is impossible, and I repeat, impossible, to hold down each other and not get down them with them. You don't have to go home with each other at night to live, but you do have a job to do. You have been appointed by God and elected by the residents of this community. And you must, I plead with you, I spoke to some of you last year, you have to learn to get along and put the city of Long Beach first and foremost. You have to do that. You must, otherwise, we're all going to fail and go down, and then the number uh, five tornado or hurricane can come in and just wash it on away. We have to do better than we have been doing. Mind you, you will reap what you sow, and it won't just stop with this generation. It'll go on and on and on. You're all bright, college educated people. If you think, you can see that everything I'm saying to you is true. I don't have a lot to say about the other structure as of now. A fool can see that we're in bad shape. But you just must, you just must concentrate and get along. Is this better? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the check was received 
Yes, by me, Chuck was hand delivered by um, Jack Shenzhen White, um, who showed up here in Nashville and brought this personal check that was written on their joint account. Um, amount of check is the amount that was mentioned in the draft court report. So no interest. Was it no interest? No, we didn't send him an invoice. He sent us a voucher check based on the Okay, uh, can you just ask your question? Yes. Where did you deposit the money and stuff? Money were in terms of which bank into the operating account of the city. Okay, so this went into the operating account for the city. Okay. It went into the operating account of the city and it went to the account that we call miscellaneous uh, um, recall of the prior year expenses. Okay? Do you have another question? Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Rosen. So my other um, point that I was going to bring up was about the Agus DC agreement, which I'm sure everybody knows that I've been foiling along with numerous other people for over a year and a half. I think I submitted over 12 requests for it. I went down to City Kent to the third floor this morning and was told you know, that they were not, basically, if such a document exists. So I'm actually very happy, Nisa, that you handed me out of DC agreement. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Nika Fiore. Now look into it and get back to you. 
Okay, and I made a notation as well. Thank you for the question. Mindy Delmer.
How, I, the, the fact that he waited till the last minute is disgraceful. That's no way to run a business. Okay, that's just on that. Now, I have also have to ask about the outside counsel that was hired to, do, to look into the audit. We're paying $4.50 an hour for that, as I understand. Okay, and you were going to hire uh, somebody from Ingram and uh, Ingram's office at uh, $2.75 an hour? What? Is that correct? Ingram and Smith, but I, I have no information with respect to the cost. Uh, Councilman Mandel was not here, um, was really in direct communication. Well, that number was 275. And, you know, we've worked with them before, John Gross and, and Chris Benator and stuff like that. And, uh, they, you know, they're, they're a good firm. But why are we spending 450? Why are we spending 450? Why do we even need to respond to the audit? Why are we trying to defend ourselves on something that's indefensible? It's all money. And yet we're continuing to spend that money. I, I just don't get it. But anyway, that's, um, I, one other thing I have to say, and you know what? You guys got to be careful. Having a breakfast meeting with three people, blatant violation of the open meetings law. I'm sure that's not what the intent was. But you have to be careful with that. It, it's just not allowed. Finally, be benches on the boardwalk. I went through them the other day. About 40% of them are broken and cracked. The material we're using is not working. And what are we replacing them with? The exact same material. It just doesn't make sense. And finally, bike lanes on the boardwalk. Nothing has been done more than except those two the signs that people run into all the time. Well, hold on now. I know that the bike lane situation, obviously we're not going to resolve that right now. It's on the pressing list along with Moby Max and all of the other issues. However, in terms of the benches, we did provide an update with respect to the benches probably two meetings ago and you were not here for that meeting. So no, uh, I, once again, one random. One meeting that last meeting. That was the only meeting I missed. Oh no, I missed you twice. Yeah. I forgot the audience. I thought you were. Miss Miranda, if you could just speak to the benches while you're standing here just to give an update well, once again so that you can have that information. The Herald, the, the, um, not the Herald, the uh, <coughs> had a nice article. And yes, it said that they're being replaced. And you guys said that only about 300 were. Right, but I wanted to talk noted. about the way that the bench is being replaced because we did make some revisions with respect to how the bench is being done. So if you can, uh, Commissioner Miranda, just explain that a little bit in terms of the difference between um, the benches that were the existing benches in comparison to what's going to happen with those that will be repaired. We, we had a count of about 300 benches that, were, that needed to be repaired, and we've repaired about uh, 75 of them already. Uh, you know, we have to early in one before the ballpark got crowded. Uh, there's no bringing equipment up there. Uh, you know, we're ordering spots, but we're looking at one of the one of the problems. At least, not breaking from vandalism. Some of these benches were underwater during sand, and the material got brittle. Um, one. A lot of people are doing their exercising on them, with people running on them. They have a cantilever over the ends. People do push-ups on them. And when they start to get fatigued, that's where they break. I have a sample up in my office of one we've asked the company to take a look at. Uh, we're replacing the slats that are broken with the same slats, so we don't have a bunch of mismatched benches. So, uh, but we are looking at spreading the legs out on the benches so there's less cantilever. By creating less cantilever, there'll be less uh, you know, uh, tending on those ends so you won't get fatigued and hopefully that will solve some of the problem. But people really shouldn't be running on them, skateboarding on them, uh, you know, jumping from bench to bench and doing push-ups off them. They're just not made for that. Okay, all right. And, and just by the way, on, on, on the bike lanes, I did send a memo out uh, to all the council members asking for some input. Uh, we did get a, a great recommendation from Allison Blanchett on the type of sign that we could use that's uh, uh, DOT approved and I've been looking at it. I think it will solve a lot of the problems. Um, we've tried some paints, they just wash off. So we do have a solution, it's going to be a little expensive, but uh, I think it will work in the long run and be good signage for most people to understand. But I also think we need to have a committee of walkers and bikers and come up with some ground rules 
uh, when we have people on there in the, on the busiest parts of the day racing their bikes at 90 miles an hour. And I don't care how many signs you put up and stuff like that, little kids that aren't being watched by their parents are going to wander into the bike lane. So we need to have some ground rules also. Okay. Thank you. Um, did that answer your question, or do you have another question? The only thing I have to comment on is sure. the back of the bench is a cracking. And nobody goes on them, nobody does exercise, it's on the back, it's the material. Okay. Okay. All right, let's hear from Sarah Mondanesi. Thank you, uh, Joe Dean, Long Beach, uh, I just 
just would like to uh, piggyback on the young lady from the East End that talked about a traffic problem on uh, Walnut. Um, I too have had a traffic problem on West Park Street from New York to Nevada. Uh, I've been told many times by people here that I had to go to the traffic department, the traffic division, and they will do a study. And um, when they go to the traffic department, the traffic division, they say we can't do anything unless the city council does us. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a uh, circular motion here. And so uh, I think the city council has to realize that nobody anywhere in Long Beach is going to do anything unless the city council directs them to do so. So I ask you, just as an elderly lady, to point out, come together, fly people. We've got to say kumbaya around the campfire or something like that. All right. Uh, as long as I'm on a traffic study, um, I've asked uh, Ms. Ward uh, for a response from the study. I haven't received anything, but I still think the city council is uh, ultimately responsible because Ms. Ward, uh, Ms. Ford said West Park is owned and operated by the city of Long Beach. You can tell Nassau County we want traffic control on every tourist street. You can do it. You're capable of all right, um, as far as those clap about things, uh, there's a topic of conversation now. I've lived on the corner of Arizona and Park since October of 1971. Um, I'm aware that up until 1992, every time there's a high tide, that corner flow. After the 92 storm, they did some rebuilding on uh, West Park, and they put the flap of valve in, and I knew that there wasn't going to be any flood if the flap of valve was working, unless the tide was over seven feet. Because it's five feet, it's at the street level, and it's, that's when you use the flood now. With over seven feet, then you might go to flood. I can tell you now that the flap of valve on the corner of Arizona are. It's not working. Why? Because the street floods every time there's a high tide. Okay, and did you and the water them? is coming up through the drains. The storm drains. Causing corrosion on the streets, causing corrosion in the sewer main because if the water goes in the street, it goes in the halls and it goes in the sewers. Okay. So again, my question is, did you report this? Well, um, I've been talking about it, they've been talking about doing it, and then we'll start the back tonight, I'll, I'll bring it up right okay. now. So if you can just send us also an, an official statement, just to give a report that we have, because we need to track how many people have this situation. If people only talk about it on the know, He knows where they are, they inspect them all. They know I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that we need to also know so that when you come forward, we can follow up, all right? Okay, so I'll so we'll send something. Thank you very much. Uh, I think it's Bailey Studer. Did I pronounce that correct? I guess I did pronounce that correct. Um, my name is Studer. Um, so I wanted to point out um, something about the water, but there, I just wanted to say before I mention that, that there's a lot of things going on here that I second with all the residents behind me, everything that they mentioned, that it's really sad that the council feels like they really don't listen to their residents when they come up with incredibly great ideas. I'm not even gonna mention that the lady that said that the car speed on Walnut and my street too. This year alone, I called the police this summer alone three times because I almost got run over on my street, you know, West Broadway. Signs are not gonna change the fact, that fact. Um, and uh, also, um, it doesn't, you know, our, our credit rating is horrible, you know, we don't even know how much we're spending yet, but we're voting on it, like, it's just completely out of control. And the residents have the answer, and it's just really sad, because we voted for you to represent us, and it's just so simple, but you have a huge transparency problem. And I love how Mr. Morango loves to mansplain things away to us all the time, but nothing is like really official because even if it was official, 
we can't get FOIL requests um, in because you deny the request for the official information. And I do want to point out that I really appreciate you, uh, the social media interaction because that's a really big part of communication nowadays, so I really do appreciate that. So, so just I wanted to point out clarification, and I'll, I'll keep your time. Just this thing about a FOIL request, you FOIL for information. Um, I just want to make the decision yes. between Ms. Miranda and Yes, I did FOIL. Um, it got partially denied. I got an email that was two pages of blocks of black because of the entire thing was reacted. Um, okay, so we'll follow up with you after, but go ahead. That'd be great. And yeah, so it's, you know, it's important to get um, you know, answers and official answers. And also the runaround people have been getting from, um, from the city uh, department of public works regarding on these signs and the water. That's the same thing we got regarding the issue that I'm talking about, which is the water meeting that we had, the E. coli scare. And I want to know, um, where, what's the timeline to replace our two towers? Um, you know, we're still with blood, we're still with brown water. Our chlorine levels are lower now. We still don't know the source of the E. coli, so because the, the chlorine levels are lower, this could happen again, and we have no idea if it will happen again. So I want to know the timeline on the replacement of the towers. And I just tagged you in a post on Facebook that you're um, on a group that you are part of, Long Beach and Y water quality. Uh, 13 hours ago, a gentleman named Jeff Rosner posted his Brita filter, which is, it, it looks, it, the brown water, it's the color of this thing right here, that is, um, this wood. And um, after the Brita filter, it's completely clear the color of uh, that flag, um, the, uh, the white part of the American flag. Um, so I just want you to see that, and that, you know, I don't know how many of you can raise your hands who still have brown water uh, in from coming out from their taps and showers. Um, but I, from ever since the E. coli scare, I get water deliveries. I'm spending a fortune on water, and I have a water filter on my shower. And I want to know what's being done for, in regards to our water infrastructure, and the timeline on correcting that. Okay, so we're going to speak to the tower, but in, in the meantime, um, again, thank you for for uh, tagging me in that, and when I get home at some point, I will respond to the people within that group just to remind them that it's so important that you also report this. We do, no, no, that's Ms. Fine. Moore. We, we not, do. Hold on, let me finish. We do. What I'm saying is it's important that you, that you do that because we need to track how many times you and so many other people have actually moved forward with making a complaint. We have to keep that because we want to hold people accountable. And it's my understanding in my conversations with the commissioner, they are actually keeping that list and they're doing their best to go over that list to make sure that we address those issues. So I need the people who are within that group and I will send them a message to keep doing it so we can look at it and see if some progress is being made. We're not saying that you have it because we know that you have, but we want to make sure that there are some people who are on that list that that can be counted because this is about data. We do need data because I'm, uh, obviously you were a part of that forum, I was a part of that forum. There were a lot of women who came up and said this is what's happening, but without the data, it was just a group of women saying this is what's happening. So what we're saying is we're going to take our steps here in the city of Long Beach. That, that forum was sponsored by our senator, but this is what we can do. We can take action as a community and as a, as a municipality to say these are the things that we're doing. We want to be able to give a report back to the community to say, look, there were 700 people who called in. There were 500 people that we that we were able to address so that we have something and that we can build from that. All right? Uh, this time we'll hear from Ms. Miranda and then we'll move on to Michael Dory. Thank you. a couple of things. Uh, on the water tanks, we, we have the design work going on to take down the standpipe this year. Uh, we have a grant in for uh, the state uh, for the uh, Water Infrastructure Improvement Act. Uh, hopefully we'll get about $3 million. And we have had preliminary design plans already approved for the new tank. Uh, once we, we get next year, we'll be uh, doing design documents to go out to bid. We hope that tank will be in service by 2021. I don't think believe the tanks have anything to do with this colored water. Uh, 
but they do need to be replaced with more storage and uh, a new tank, uh, just based on the maintenance and how the condition of the existing tanks and how old they are. Okay, and I think also it's important that people who have these concerns understand that the tank itself is not going to solve the groundwater situation. We have a lot of antiquated pipes, um, but we have to we have to address that as a city. Uh, we're not going to be able to resolve that issue just, tonight. Just like the comment about have, a couple things about this whole water. One, listening to the people during that meeting, uh, it's obviously people try to you know think that this whole water is what caused the the um, the E. coli outbreak. It did not. Nobody said that. that some people you know, did, so let's let's yeah. not that. Okay, okay. Some, some people do confuse that, you know, with that. But did hear a lot of complaints about this called water. So we started a log up in the double the DPW office, so we started investigating each one of these this cold water points the time they came in. Several of them we found out were because there was hydrants being used in the area by contractors. Once you open up a flow, you reverse the flow, uh, and it creates disturbance in the main and some of the the percolation that's on the older line, line cast things, it breaks off. We are looking at some different treatment options uh, to uh, stabilize the water. There's a, an indice called the Langley Index. When the Langley Index is slightly negative, it tends to corrode items off the pipe. When the Langley Index is slightly positive, it tends to deposit and coat the pipes. Uh, in reviewing the history, somewhere along the line, they would run a pH of about eight. They decided years ago to lower it to seven six. Trying to find out why they made that decision. But we're looking to raise the pH of the treated water back today. This will start to put more coating again on the pipe. In terms of filters, all groundwater, all across Long Island water has many suspended solids in it. And when you filter water, those suspended solids get into filter, and that's why they're brown. But if you were to drink distilled water, that would be healthy because now. Pure water without any solids in it will actually absorb chemicals from your body. So doctors will tell you, you don't drink distilled water. So those suspended solids are not harmful, but when you filter them, obviously over a period of time, they're going to make the filter look brown. Uh, you know, there's various elements in the water that exist naturally in the ground. So uh, you can't always go by a filter that that's, that that's some issue. Okay, so I think, again, um, we're not going to in any way discredit this issue or devalue what the claims that you've raised. I think it's important for us to form some kind of committee um, within our city so that we can hear more from the residents. And um, I will, uh, I guess I'll tag you later this evening and see where we can go from there. But thank you so much, uh, Commander, uh, Commissioner. John, just to point out just one quick question. I know you, you said you've taken a lot. Have people been falling and getting relatively since that meeting, we've had less than 20 calls, and several of them, as I say, were a result of hydrants being used right at that time, and we, we went out and spoke to the contractors. Uh, one of them was the person's water tank failed and left the rust stain on the roof. Obviously, water tanks over time will have rust on the bottom. That's not what happened. Okay, but this is not Listen, your time. I'm not going to answer your question. In this room.
to the former speaker, but I just want to clear that up, and I'm very appreciative of Mr. Miranda's knowledge and expertise and the way he delivers his conversation. Now, there's no way I can um, limit this conversation in three minutes, so I'm going to do my best. Is the attorney Capizolo still employed by the city of Long Beach? Is he still the outside counsel? Yes. Yes. At four hundred fifty an hour. The retainer agreement hasn't changed. Who signed the retainer agreement? Uh, then after the city manager tag. Does it have to be renewed by or reconfirmed by the current active city manager? In other words, active city manager has you signed it. Does it terminate at any point? Whenever we stop asking to provide legal services. Who's waiting? The city. The city being the council? No. The corporation the, council? The, the city, yes. The Who is the city? The city of Long Beach is the, I'm referring to the executive branch of the city. I'm, I think I'm looking at this the executive branch. the legislative branch. Oh, so the executive branch is just the city manager? Yeah. And the city administration. Okay. I, here's my concern, my confusion now. There were a bunch of authorizations and resolutions authorizing the city manager and the acting city manager to enter into a contract. Tonight, you all heard of resolution authorizing the acting city manager to sign a contract. Am I wrong? So don't you need a resolution to authorize to enter into a contract for X, Y, or Z. Now, you're both attorneys. I'm not, but I'm just following the rule. Okay. Uh, and here's my last point because I know that bus is going to ring. I've dealt with controllers' reports. I've had to respond to controllers' reports. I've had to conduct the details of that and the response with my current mayor and board. You're telling me that my taxpayer dollars are, are being paid for by an attorney hired by a former, former acting city manager at $450 an hour to defend what's in the report, I don't know. Who's going to reply to this report? It's an attorney who doesn't even know what's going on here. I mean, I, I don't like holding the Herald newspapers, but Kaminsky calls for a payout quote. That was over a year ago. Council from President Aramo said, it's too much money. And if you don't believe me, I'll give you the article of the quote. How much do I have to do here? Seriously, I, I don't want to get annoyed, but I feel like I am being, me personally, and maybe other people, and I don't know how many people are still here listening to this, but, okay. Um, I would have, let me just summarize it in this way. According to Newsday, he was engaged in May of 2018. Council, then President Councilman Aramo had said in July, and I imagine it's quoted accurately, and please forgive me if it's misquoted, that it's too expensive. So, if it's too expensive, it's four to fifty dollars an hour. What is going on? Is somebody not giving accurate information internally here? I mean, Councilman Aramo, I think you really need to run over an apology. Well, you were you were quoted as saying yeah, for us for us to run our own for us to run our own investigation, I believe it would have been No 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 <laughs> For you to discuss your own legal counsel. I had nothing to do with hiring counsel. 
I know that. But if you, 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 you call Cap is always, say, Cap is always, as far as I understand it, I've spoken to the man, his only role is to protect the interests of the city. Not any one employee, not any one individual person, whether mm -hmm. former employee or current employee. His only role is to protect the interest of the city while going through this order with the comptroller and the district attorney. That's as I understand. All right, thank you. The last recommendation, Council President Moore, uh, is I would seriously ask for an extension of time to respond to this draft order and have that response given by a, a new acting city manager. Thank you. Thank you. Wait, Good point. Oh, wait, before you leave. Who is directing the response to the control of it? Mr. Capitol. Okay, so since you brought up the executive branch and the legislative branch of the city, um, will that response be put in front of the council for approval before it's submitted? Um, the council is going to be the controller. Okay, so the city, the city manager, Northern Corporation Council Office, sets city policy. The city council sets city policy. You implement the city council's policy. So Mr. Capazzolo responding on behalf of the city manager is not the city's position. That is the city manager's position, but not the city's position. And just to be clear, I'll, I'll put it out there. I contacted the state comptroller's office and talked to the investigators. And I made it clear to them that anything that comes from the city that wasn't approved by the council first should be considered to be the opinion of the city manager alone, or Mr. Capazzolo alone, or whatever, if it's not approved by the council. Because it's the council that sets policy, not the staff.
Robert Akapiti will resign. His last day for city for active city manager position will be October the first. Many distasteful postings have appeared on social media. What are people trying to do to Miss Moore? Put her into a fragment emotional state? Maybe Anissa can take on the legacy of a tough goddess who transforms her enemies into sound-minded and productive people. Mm -hmm. I'm Anissa Moore. I say to you, like a Timex watch, take the lickings and keep on ticking. Discuss this 
and it needs to happen. Although we know the science has to stop the speeding around the corner. We actually we approved for that. Um, we did. We voted on it. There's no stop. Okay, so you need to send us a message stating that because we the last time you were here several years ago, we yeah. voted on that. Yeah. On the a resolution. Actually, all of us were a part of that resolution. So just please send us an email and we will follow up on that because it was approved by the council. And I guess this would be probably my last question. If a council person is not here um, consistently, you still do get your stipend. Whatever that, whatever that money is, regardless of whether you're present or not, correct? Can you speak to scientists? Oh, no, it's okay. The money, the salaries of the people. Yes, it's Okay. All right, well, we have a wonderful week. Um, we need you to work and play nights together, please. Um, I look forward to, I like discussion and debate, which has happened here tonight, um, and I appreciate it. Um, I think we can do a little more. But I ask for a lot from people sometimes, so maybe it's just me. Um, but we do have some pressing, pressing issues that very much so need to be addressed. And I don't want to get into discussions of trite conversations on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you. Email, but I'd be curious to know what the time was. And also, just to follow up on, on 
on a, a on a, Mary Ball said this comment. Uh, you, you talked about the, the, the council president not carrying their vote, not carrying any more weight than any other members. That's true. Now, I don't think anybody here was suggesting that your vote carry more weight. You are but one of three. And at that point in time, there, was one, there were three votes that were committed to taking a certain course of action. You, you denied your decision, but you did make a decision. And you denied the action, but you did take action. You decided to pull your support for going forward with that meeting. And I, I really am struggling to understand why. I don't think that you've done anything or said anything to make me understand your actions better. So I'd be certainly willing to hear if, if you could expand upon your reasoning, I'd be all yours. Have you finished all your questions? Yeah. All right, let's, let's, go, uh, let's go with the payment of Capizolo and the hiring of Capizolo. You can handle those two. When did we become aware? Um, I can only speak for myself. I didn't become aware until the actual report was released and people started asking questions with respect to who is Capizolo. That was not a part of my conversations. I didn't have any uh, communication uh, with the city administration in terms of his presence or his, um, his ability to act or to speak on behalf of the city. So I can only speak to that. In terms of the rules of form, though there is no form for this because there is no formal agenda for the work session. So that means that if two people from the council show up, that's fine. We're having the conversations. That information will be shared with the remainder of the council. I do also, I still, yes, I did call for the special meeting, the 7.30 a.m. meeting. I did call for that meeting. At the time, I was in support of that meeting. Um, no one came to me and had a conversation. I wasn't threatened in any way to make a decision. My decision was not to make, uh, make the city fall into a place where we did not have independent counsel. As stated earlier, I still support that. I'm just, I'm just not at this time supporting the council that we had initially gone with, the, the breakfast club, that meeting. Um, and and that is another council, just not that particular one. That's all. Okay. That's, that's okay. the only difference here. Okay. We still have to do that because we have to move forward and we need to make a statement and also we need to protect the city and the residents. So we're all we're still saying that we're just it's just the particular firm that was chosen later in that afternoon. Um, I just realized that at this time for me personally, I did not feel comfortable with that. Um, I don't want to say too much about it because some of us have relationships with that firm, and I'll just leave it like that. Um, he, in terms of the resignation, like I said, I was here after three o'clock. I picked up the separation payment agreement. I didn't. I didn't even open it because I assumed that I was going to have a meeting or have a conversation with everyone else about it. I did scan it. I did send it to the other council members, but it was not until that evening when he sent out the resignation email that I had official word that he was going to um, resign and resign on October first. So I didn't have any new information uh, or have information before the rest of the council. We all received the same the same information. So just to clarify, he sent an actual email that said uh, I believe the email the title of that email was departing, and that was it. And we all received. So you did not know earlier in the afternoon that Mr. Agatisi intended to resign? No. Right, sometime prior to, let's say, 5 o'clock? No, not at all, because okay. um, I just received the paperwork and my gut was saying this is probably what it means. But I couldn't say that and I couldn't tell, I didn't tell anybody because I didn't have the information. Okay. Okay? Um, there were two other questions and we're just going to see if we can get some answers to those. I'm sorry, Mr. Gustafson. The hiring of Mr. Capizolo when? I think that was the question when? No, no. I, we've covered that. I want to know how much you've received to date. Okay. And I, 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 I more generally ask the council members as individuals when they became aware of this hire. Um, I, I don't have a running penalty of his invoices. At one point I calculated it because the number of the council asked me to, to, to be frank, I don't recall how much. Yeah, this, this has been asked before. How, how can we be here and not still not have this number? No, the, the Are you guys embarrassed at this? No, the council <laughs> asked for it and I provided it to the council. I just can't recall what the specific number as of a couple of weeks ago, 92500 92500 All right. But we, well, we couldn't afford our own order. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gustav. Jim Todd. Thank you, Mr. Gustav. 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 Thank you,
York. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, and to uh, Vice Chair and Council members. And uh, I just want to, again, uh, thank you, Anthony, for making the vote of helping with history, uh, nominating Anissa. Uh, again, a lot of people supported, and uh, you know, I'm really here to show my support for you, Madam Chair, uh, and the Council. Uh, because we did make a historic vote, and then I saw a lot of stuff just because some people may have felt like uh, because they voted with you or for you, or maybe they a friend, and now they should be able to dictate or tell you everything uh, that you should do. Uh, I, I pray that we continue to be transparent, right? And you have every right to decide if you're with someone and then five minutes later decide if you're not with them. That, that's, that's your right to do that. Nobody can dictate to you whether you woke up Monday morning after Friday, why did you decide? They can say whatever they want, like I'm saying right now. But you are uh, a council member like everyone else, and you know what, if five members would have been at that breakfast meeting, then maybe it would have been three. And I say, like some of the things that we said was going on before, and what Anthony or Diamond was doing, make sure everybody know. Because if they decide no, yeah, as long as it's three, and it can go either way, whether they're bored or not, I say let us, you know, uh, uh, Bendo, like they said before, it was only three. You could have called Diamond, you could have called the Ramos. So as much as people want to say, Anissa, you're at fault, well, you know, you could have called them to get some eggs and cheese too. You know, I mean, everybody is at fault. So let's not sit here and say on Facebook, oh, we were only concerned about her story. We were only concerned about her being African American and black. I saw it, and that's offensive to me. And all the mumbling in the back, you can continue mumbling, okay? But the fact of the matter is that you will get more scrutiny and scrutiny that others don't have because sometimes it will come to you because of your color. And I don't care what somebody say, if they, you know, at the end of the day, it needs to be transparent. Everything that you're doing, you're going to get screwed. Yes, you're going to get people that come against you because of the position that you hold. And everyone should be able to speak their mind. But I'm going to tell you that I'm supporting you, and I'm thinking about who the next two will be. But that's whoever supports my community and all city of Long Beach. And if you ain't coming and supporting my community and a lot of the platform that I deal with and face in North Park, you ain't getting my vote. Okay, so again, I'm here to support you, and I want to make that clear. Just like people say that it was only three at the meeting, well, it should have been all five. All right? All right? I support you, and I support all of you. When you do what's right, when you do what's wrong, then we need to say what we need to say. God bless you. I'm praying for all of you to continue doing what's right.